Voyager 2, launched in 1977, has been drifting through the darkness of deep space for over 45 years. Just when most assumed its best days were behind it, something extraordinary happened. A Nobel Prize-winning physicist has issued a chilling warning. Voyager 2 has made an impossible discovery, one that could rewrite not only our understanding of space, but of reality itself. What did it find? Why is this discovery being kept quiet? And could this ancient probe be the first to touch? Something not meant to be touched? In the early 1970s, scientists at NASA made a discovery so improbable and so cosmic in nature that it only came once every 176 years. The outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune were aligning. These four gas and ice giants were falling into a perfect gravitational arc, allowing a single spacecraft to slingshot from one to the next, gaining speed at each planet without using fuel. It was called the Grand Tour, and it changed everything. Voyager 2 was the first of the U pair to launch in 1977, designed to take full advantage of this rare alignment. With barely 68 kilobytes of memory and instruments now considered ancient, it nonetheless became the first and only spacecraft in human history to visit all four of those worlds. Each flyby revealed the impossible. Jupiter's churning storms and volcanic moons like Io, Saturn's haunting rings and Titan's smoggy atmosphere that hinted at methane lakes, Uranus spinning on its side with a bizarre magnetic field, and Neptune with its dark spot and supersonic winds. The data Voyager 2 returned wasn't just fascinating, it was transformative. But when it passed Neptune in 1989, most assumed its job was done. The cameras were turned off, the press moved on, and Voyager 2 continued into the void, uncelebrated. What few realized then was that its true mission had just begun. For decades, Voyager 2 kept flying silently, beyond the known planets, past Pluto, past the Kuiper Belt, past the reach of our sun's protective magnetic field, and into interstellar space. In 2018, NASA confirmed it. Voyager 2 had crossed the heliopause, the invisible bubble where the solar wind ends and the rest of the galaxy begins. It joined Voyager 1 as the only human-made objects to ever do so. But Voyager 2 had one major advantage. Many of its scientific instruments were still working. And what it began transmitting from this new frontier shook the scientific community. Instead of a calm, endless void, Voyager 2 found turbulence, a chaotic sea of particles and fields that didn't behave as predicted. Plasma density didn't drop. It increased. Cosmic rays spiked in ways that defied standard models. Magnetic fields twisted in impossible directions. It became clear interstellar space was not empty. It was alive, shifting, pushing back. But what happened next? A burst of data that appeared to contradict the known laws of physics forced even the most skeptical scientists to reconsider everything including a Nobel physicist who had long dismissed the idea of the anomalous zone at the edge of the heliosphere. Until now, sometime in early 2024, Voyager 2 transmitted a data package that was immediately flagged as irregular. At first, NASA assumed it was another technical hiccup, not uncommon for a spacecraft powered by decaying plutonium and running on decades-old software, but as the Deep Space Network decoded the signal, it became clear this was no glitch. The readings showed a burst of high-frequency electromagnetic activity, too structured to be random and too powerful to come from the spacecraft itself. The sensors had recorded a spike in plasma oscillations and, most bizarrely, a shift in background. Radiation that suggested localized curvature of space-time. Let's pause there. Localized space-time curvature, recorded by a 45-year-old probe billions of miles from Earth, with no black hole, no neutron star, and no gravitational body anywhere. Nearby, 
According to Einstein's equations, that should be impossible. And yet, the data was consistent. The Nobel physicist, whose name remains undisclosed for security reasons, reviewed the findings and delivered a brief but chilling comment. This is not a natural region of space. Something is at work here. NASA went silent. The press received no statement. Voyager 2 continued its journey, now watched with more intensity than ever before. Was this the first time we had detected an artificial gravitational signature in space? Or had Voyager 2 stumbled upon a region where the universe, or something within it, was building something? From the beginning, Voyager 2 was more than a machine. It was a message. On its side is mounted the golden record, a 12-inch gold-plated disc containing music, greetings in 55 languages, sounds of nature, and a map showing the location of Earth. Carl Sagan, who led the team behind the record, called it a bottle cast into the cosmic ocean. But what if the bottle was found? What if Voyager 2's recent signal wasn't a discovery, but a reply? The structured plasma wave, the anomalous space-time shift, the sudden changes in signal orientation, these weren't isolated glitches, they happened in succession. They followed a pattern, a response. And if something found Voyager 2, if something studied the golden record, decoded it, understood it, then this might not be the last message we receive, this could be the first, and the warning from the Nobel laureate, it wasn't about fear, it was about preparation. Because the discovery Voyager 2 just made may prove that we are not the only intelligent life in this part of the galaxy. Worse, we might have just knocked on a door and someone knocked back. Shortly after the anomaly was detected, a curious pattern began to emerge, one that had nothing to do with what Voyager 2 was transmitting, but rather what it wasn't. The scientific community noticed that during the days surrounding the strange signal burst, several of Voyager 2's core instruments had gone quiet. Instruments that had been faithfully returning data for decades suddenly registered nothing. No cosmic rays, no plasma waves, no magnetic field lines. It was as if the probe had entered a void where even the basic fabric of reality went dark. But here's where things got disturbing. When data flow resumed, the transmission frequency was altered ever so slightly. Not enough to break contact, but enough for engineers to notice. This shift hadn't been programmed, it hadn't been commanded, it hadn't even been anticipated. That change in frequency was so precise, so mathematically intentional, that some experts suggested it might have been an external correction, as if something had nudged the signal to tune it better. We're talking about Voyager 2, a spacecraft, running on technology older than the Internet, suddenly operating as if its transmission was being calibrated from the outside. And the terrifying question that followed was immediate. By who or by what? Inside NASA and among international astrophysics circles, a deep divide began to form. On one side were the traditionalists, engineers and physicists who insisted the signal anomalies were explainable through rare but natural cosmic phenomena. Perhaps a high-energy cosmic ray burst or unknown interstellar turbulence. Their position was simple. Space is weird. That doesn't mean it's intelligent. On the other side was a growing group of scientific iconoclasts, some retired, some still active, who were no longer so quick to dismiss the implications. Among them was the Nobel physicist who had reviewed the raw data and, according to leaked transcripts, had remarked off record, either this is a new form of energy interaction or Voyager 2 has been altered. Either way, we've crossed into something beyond human science. Rumors began to spread that a private group of independent researchers, funded by anonymous investors, had started building simulation models to replicate the patterns found in the signal. Some of these models allegedly produced results that echoed complex but non-human logic systems, almost like a mathematical language buried inside the noise. 
But here's the chilling part. None of these models could replicate the anomaly with current physics alone. In other words, Something in that signal defies not just our understanding, but the very tools we use to understand. While the public discussion remained scientific, behind closed doors, the tone shifted dramatically. Intelligence agencies, including the U.S. Department of Defense and even foreign counterparts, reportedly began monitoring the Voyager communications more closely. Internal memos described the event as a potential extraterrestrial signature with unknown intent. Why would military agencies be interested in a glitchy old probe? Because if Voyager 2's signal was not natural, and if it was evidence of an intelligent entity, then we're no longer talking about science, we're talking about first contact. And that has geopolitical consequences. Think about it. A probe, carrying Earth's coordinates, DNA diagrams, images of our species, and greetings in dozens of languages, may have just made contact with something unknown, out there in interstellar space. And now it's behaving abnormally. Governments began asking, what if they can trace the probe back to us? What if this is just the beginning of a chain reaction we can't control? NASA hasn't confirmed any of this, of course. But the sudden silence from the agency, combined with increased security around Voyager tracking data, has only added fuel to the fire. Because if they aren't hiding something, then why does it feel like they are? While scientists and governments debate the technical and political implications of Voyager 2's signal, a deeper, more unsettling question is rising within the public. Are we psychologically ready to accept that we're not alone? For decades, humans have gazed into the night. Sky asking the same question. Is anybody out there? 